members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, call to order. The uh, chair takes note of the fact that the uh, full complement of the board is here with the exception of Catherine Miller and Stephen LaPlante. So we are operating with uh, five members from our usual full complement of seven. Uh, first item on the agenda tonight is the approval of the minutes of our May 22, 2001 meeting. Comments from board members on the May 22, 2001 meeting minutes. Hearing none, uh, could I have a motion? A uh, motion from Mr. Keneally, a second? Second. Uh, second, Mr. Frustasi. Uh, comments, discussion? All those in favor of the motion to approve the May 22, 2001 minutes as submitted? Opposed? The minutes are approved by a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Next item on the agenda is um, old business. Uh, we have no old business that I know of. Anybody have old business? Uh, next item on the agenda then is new business. And the first item of new business is to hear the request of Sarah and Edward McCall for Avon Road tax, ma tax map U12, lot seven, for a setback reduction to replace a 12 foot by 20 foot garage at seven feet from the right side property line with a new 16 by 26 foot garage at eight feet from the right side property line. Is anyone here on the request of Sarah and Edward McCall? Um, is, are Sarah or Edward McCall here? Thank you. Um, why don't you step up to the podium for us, if you would, please? There is one correction. Um, I think the, the garage is 18, not 16. I think you had it listed at 16 one place, and, but it's 18 feet. The new garage is to be 18 by 26 feet? Correct. If you would um, tell us your name and address, please. I'm Sarah McCall, and I live at 4 Avon Road in Cape. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. McCall, the floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you to the committee for hearing my request. Um, I'll be brief because I, I hope everybody has received the packet that I provided. Does everybody have my application and the pictures of the property, my architect's plans? and my letter, which states what my request is, or does anybody need anything? Yes, that has all been submitted okay. to us, thank you. Um, the correction that Bruce Smith just explained, um, when I, in the cover letter, what I proposed was a garage that was 16 by 26, it should be 18 by 26. That 18 foot is backed up in the application so that all the measurements that I provided are based on the 18. And the architect's plans, the elevations, and the floor plan of the garage is based on 18 foot width. The bottom line is that I'm replacing the garage, which I demolished last September. I spoke with Bruce Smith, who provided me the information about needing a setback reduction because my structure became non-conforming as a result of the change in the ordinance, the setback from 25. So what I'm proposing is to rebuild a garage which is actually not seven feet from my abutters property line, but will be eight feet from the abutters property line. It will be set five feet farther back from the street and it will be longer and wider. It will be wider by six feet. And the bottom line is, I think it's the best place for the garage on the property. I have the approvals of my abutters and other people on my street. 
and am open to your questions about what I'm intending to do or issues that, that you have. I have a question for Mr. Smith, our code enforcement officer. Is Bruce, the notice that went out referred to a new garage 16 feet by 26 feet. Um, is there a problem with the notice um, understating the size of the proposed <coughs> garage? No, the, the crucial, the crucial uh, elements are uh, map and lot address and the actual distances to the property lines that are, that are requested. Okay. Thank you. The approvals of my neighbors um, were based on 18 feet because I had them all come over and look at the property which was staked out so they would see exactly where it was. And in fact, my abutters on the left, I had originally suggested to them that I move the garage over near nearer their property so that I would achieve a bigger setback, at least from their, their side. Um, it was perceived to be more infringing, so generally speaking, people are pleased with putting it right there. Questions from board members for <laughs> Ms. McCall. I have a question. The, the uh, height of the previous garage, was that eight feet also? Yeah. No, I think it was 11.6. And, I, and we based, the architect that I worked with, I, I ripped it down without knowing about the height restriction. So he said, well, it was a seven foot door. And um, the pictures that, well, he actually came and saw it before we ripped it down because we were talking about whether or not we could add to the existing garage. Mm -hmm. And it's his best guess and my contractor's best guess that it was 11 feet, six inches. So the best, Let's see. Did you have a picture of it existing before, yeah. I think? And the proposed is going to be 12 feet, is that correct? No, 11.6. Yeah, but, or I think, I, I think that's the number that's written in here. Thank you. I could make it 12 feet. Well, while people may be pondering other points, but Dr. Chemis, I have a question. Uh, is this, was this three separate lots at one time? And, I, and my question is, a tax map shows 7A developer plan lot 154, and this shows 155. Are those indeed one and the same, or? No, there's two lots. My, my, the bigger lot is in the front. Um, and the second lot is in the back, but the, it does not show that way on that big survey. But is this three lots? No, it's two. It has always been two, and it is two. Okay. Bruce, do you, know, do you uh, this survey shows lot 155, and tax map shows 154. Is, is, is that indeed one in the same? Or? Oh, I see. You're talking. I don't know. I'm just trying to fit this onto the tax map. Where do you see the 154, 155? Tax map labels the rear lot as 7A. That's your lot also. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, it's 7 and 7A. These Seven. are the old subdivision lot numbers. So on the tax map, it's 7 and 7A. Should or be. Is your property. Right. OK. The, this does not show the 7A as being hatched as part of, uh, uh, outlined as part of your lot, but it's all. Yeah. Do, do you have the attachment that I provided? Mm -hmm. I was going by the. Bruce, I have a question for you. Uh, regarding setbacks, is roof line calculated into that uh, as, no. as a setback? No, setbacks are measured through the foundation. 
to the foundation only? Correct. Mr. Fristasi. Um, Bruce, that was a concern that I had also. This is not your typical garage. The overhang is approximately two feet based on the information that has been provided to me. And typically, your garage does not have a two-foot overhang. Um, in other communities, your overhang would be considered part of, part of the building and would require a, a greater setback. Um, is this Cape Elizabeth's um, posture? Is this yours, where you, where you don't, uh, don't require the uh, setback? There it's in here on the definitions of some place where it says to the foundation, the grid is clear. I just have to find it. But it is to the foundation. Okay. Typically, when somebody comes in, if they have a found, uh, an overhang such that you could drop a wall and store wood under it or, or something like that, then, then I consider that overhang as part of the, the structure. But if it's an overhang, even though it may be a big overhang of two feet, if the purpose is for an overhang, then I don't consider it. I go by the definition, which is to the foundation. I'll see if I can find that. Okay. Well, it, it, I'll have to say that it does, uh, it does concern me, the major overhang. Um, this is for the applicant now. You mentioned this is the best spot for it, the, for the garage. Could you uh, explain that a little more detail as to why you can't move it over towards the, uh, the building, that your house, and away from the property line a little more? Yep. Um, may I address the overhang issue first? Sure. Um, it, the reason I had the architect design it like that is so it would look like the house. The house has a, the rafter tails come out this way. So the old garage was not that way. <laughs> we were just trying to make it look the best possible way it could. I know you don't have a picture of the house probably that, but anyway, that's, that's that issue. Um, so we're actually trying to match the roof line of the house by making the garage look as much like it as possible. Um, I'm sure it doesn't have to be that way. With regards to the location of the garage, um, our house on the right-hand side where you approach it in a car, um, that's where the driveway is. And if I move it over any further, I can't drive into the garage, um, straight into the garage. And my house um, is so close to me as I drive in the driveway, I have a pretty significant snow removal issue in that I, I have to be very careful about plowing the snow into the yard as it is. And if I move it over to the left, away from the abutters property line, um, I won't have anywhere to plow the snow, which is part of the reason that I'm not requesting a two-car garage, which would be wonderful, because I feel that I will not have any place to put the snow that I plow. Um, the other issue as to the location of the garage is that if I move it over into my yard, um, Essentially, I've got, to, I've got to pave more so I can drive into my backyard and park my car in there. On the uh, mortgage lawn inspection plan, uh, it shows what appears to be a paved driveway coming in that extends to the left. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, it looks to me like there was a paved driveway. There still is, yep. Okay. That extends beyond the left of the garage. Yeah. In other words, I drive in and it goes slightly to the yeah. left. Yeah, that's where we park our other car. Okay. So we park a car here and we drive to the left. And if we put the garage over that way. Yeah. Um, well, I ruined the view out my window. In addition to having um, a garage where I'd have to make it caddy corner so that I'd be driving in this way or kind of jury rig it so I'd kind of take a swoop and go in, um, it, it would not look as, as good. 
um, either over there. It would present me with difficulties. Um, driving into it and not so much as backing out. It, um, I would expect that my neighbors to the left would much prefer to have it in the same place that it was. That's when they purchased their lot, what was there. Um, I don't know that for sure, but Could the garage go any further back on the lot as well as to I the pushed, left? Well, I pushed it back five feet. Um, it doesn't seem smart to me to locate a garage yet further away because I end up making more pavement to get there. I end up plowing more. Um, I end up, what my neighbor has done is planted hemlocks all along between our houses and they extend to what is the back of where my garage would, my new garage would be almost, and I've told him that I will plant four new trees there so that he doesn't see it. So the further back it gets, the more likelihood he has of seeing the end of the garage. Um, he can't see it at all with his, the hemlocks that he's planted at this point in the spruces. I have a question for the chair. Mr. Firstasi? Yes. You look like you're reading, as I was. Yes, I out, am. I'm reading trying to the, find out uh, what the ordinance. Yeah, what we're trying to determine here. We're not, she's not asking for a variance. Correct. Correct. So we don't have to prove hardship, practical difficulty? Correct. You're getting to the right question. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of confused. Why isn't she asking for a variance? Well, if, if the truth uh, be known, and it should, when I came in here about 15 minutes early, I walked up to Bruce and I said, Bruce, why isn't this first one asking for a variance? Mm -hmm. There's no and, garage and there then now. Just, Excuse me. There's no garage there now. And but she's I get the right to, to rebuild. Excuse I'm me. Sorry. She's asking to build a garage. And she's asking for a variance from the setback. Well, she's not asking to replace a garage because the, re the garage We is should not take there. it one step at a time. As yeah. far as I'm concerned, the garage has a right to be rebuilt, and that footprint is still locked in, in, in for one year. So whether the garage is there or not, the way I interpret the ordinance, that, that she, it, it, we, the board can treat the, that footprint as being existing at this point in order to in order to rebuild another garage, okay? So we need to take, clarify that first. If you don't agree with that, then, then we send it away. But, I mean, they're, they're, that's grandfather, that footprint's grandfathered for one year from the date of destruction, from the date she took it down. Well, no, we don't necessarily disagree with that. I think we just w are trying to understand. Well, but then we could establish that, and then we can move to the next, but we should establish that first. Well, why don't we first establish exactly what provision of the ordinance the McCalls are proceeding under so that we collectively as the board know what standards but I we're still think if, if, if I'm hearing Mr. Vistachi correctly because the garage isn't there we shouldn't be in the section at all we should be for in a variance we need to establish that 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 footprint still exists for the purposes of finding out which section you want to go by in the ordinance I think that's important isn't that what you're trying to get at well, I, I think that definitely has to be established, whether we are considering the, the fact that she has the ability to rebuild within one year, and in your ter interpretation that the garage or the footprint is still existing. Right now, I don't see it that way, and that's why I'm confused as, as to what we're basing this, this request on. Well, under Bruce, and tell me if I'm looking at the right section here for this, and maybe Maybe this helps answer your question. I'm looking at page 36 of the ordinance, um, section 19-4-3B4. Right. 
reconstruction or replacement. Um, and this is actually a provision that Bruce had pointed out to me uh, before the hearing when I asked him. Said so maybe re reconstruct or replace provided a permit is obtained within one year of the date of said damage, destruction, or removal. Reconstruction or re of a non conforming structure not in compliance with limitation may be permitted provided that such reconstruction is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical standards determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals. So that tells me that she's locked into the right to come before the board within this section for at least one year. It says will not increase the number of square foot of floor area, though, Bruce. I mean, that she is, she is increasing the area. But you have to read on. Yeah, if you go on to the next That's why she's sentence, here. the next sentence is reconstruction of a non-conforming structure not in compliance with these limitations, which it's not because there's a bigger floor area, may be permitted provided that such reconstruction is in compliance with the setback requirement to, to the greatest extent as determined by the ZBA in accordance with the purposes of this ordinance. Is that the provision? That's the provision that yes. we are proceeding under. Yes. Now, is is there a tie-in to section 19-5-5 conditional use permits in any way? Well, if you go under 19. What is it? 19433. Four, three. Um, B2, it is going to be enlarged, and the board can grant a further reduction in the, in the side or rear setback requirements because of the enlargement. Uh, it triggers, it triggers a setback reduction from what the requirement would be. I know the wording isn't quite what I'd like to see. And what provision were you looking at for 19, that answer? 1943B2. D2? B2. B2. The board. Two. Appeal page, to page 34. Yeah, B27. Appeal to enlarge the structure. The further reduction is simply because the garage is being enlarged. It's no different than if, if somebody came to the board to, to have a, get a variance to take a, a to, an, to add on to an existing 14-foot garage within a setback. They'd have to get a variance even though they weren't going close to the property line and even though they may be going further from the property line, they would still need some kind of approval, whether it would be a variance or or a, a setback reduction, reconstruction, enlargement. And that's why, um, because of something that was existing and the height wasn't going to be increased, that's why I sent it sent her to the board under this section. Uh, hey, Bruce, if um, I'm, I'm grappling with another little detail here, which may be unimportant. The last sentence in the first paragraph on under four on page 36 says, in no case shall a structure be reconstructed or replaced so as to increase its nonconformity. Does an increase in area within the setback zone increase the nonconformity? Where where were you? Last sentence um, in the first paragraph under four reconstruction. But see, we have but we have two different sections here. We have the reconstruction replacement. If she was simply coming just for that, then yes, you you could not increase the nonconformity. But it's tied in with enlarging at the same time, which over in this, the other section on, the, on page 34, it, it tells the board that they can grant a further reduction because of the enlargement within a setback. I know it's very confusing. I've never liked this section, but. But we're not being asked to grant a further reduction in the side setback, are we? I think you are because, it, because, because she's expanding. But aren't we actually, she's actually increasing the side setback by one foot from what it was. I think what the further reduction means is, is a reduction from, from 1943A1A, which is stated above on page 32. 
and that's the 25-foot side setback. Correct. I didn't write this section of the ordinance. It was here when I got here, so. Well, but since it's our job to try and decipher it, that's what we'll do tonight. Just for the record, should we recognize that she does have the right to rebuild the garage that was torn down, that, that Mr. Smith is correct in um, saying that she is grandfathered to build this in its previous location? For the record, Ms. McCall, when was the garage torn down? September 2000. But that, again, uh, it's, I don't know whether I should worry about this technicality, but I mean, isn't that negated by the fact that the uh, again, this last sentence, no case shall structure be reconstructed or replaced to increase its nonconformity. So that moves us out of that category, doesn't it? Well, we'll cross that bridge next. First, it's just a matter of whether she can rebuild, whether she can rebuild something bigger. Well, but this is the, this is the same Which paragraph that allows the one-year grandfathering. What I'm saying is that negated by the well, fact. But only the first half deals with, doesn't deal with the Board of Appeals. Only the second half does, though. Mm -hmm. So the footprint's grandfathered. Anything beyond the footprint, either in location or size, means that the Board of Appeals has to take a look at that. And that's the difference. If it was a simple reconstruction in the same footprint to the same size, the applicant would not be before the board. It would be a simple building permit. But, but it sounds like we're not permitted. It says, in no case shall the structure be reconstructed or replaced so as to increase its nonconformity. And that's not giving us the leeway to allow it, is it? Bruce, can I try to address that? And I know you directed that to Bruce, but yeah, go ahead, John. in the past, <clears throat> what the board has considered, I say in the past, since I've been on the board for how many years it might be, we considered increasing the nonconformity being closer to the property line and not the size. There's been a number of cases when people have asked for additions and have not gone closer to the property line, but basically have gone parallel to the, to the property line. And that has been the interpretation in the past as to not increase the nonconformity of the structure. And Bruce, that, is that, is and that, that been ties yours? very well into, into number seven on page 34, that grant a further reduction would be a further reduction of the chart on page 32, not a further reduction in the distance from what's existing to what's proposed, because yes, that would increase its nonconformity. So that ties in with sub. It backs up what I think the intent of that section was. So it's not the size of the property, but it, it's growing or uh, shrinking that, that setback. That well, that was the question I asked. Yeah. I don't, is that someplace in these regulations here? No, I, the way we've interpreted it in the past is if you don't go any closer to the property line, you can expand it, and that's not deviating from the, the ordinance or the intent of the ordinance. With, As, with Board of Appeals approval? With the, with the approval, right. Correct. And provided that, that the Board has found it to be um, to the greatest practical extent that the applicant has avoided uh, Going, getting closer to the property line and um, expanding the nonconformity. In this particular case, she's, she's had that was six foot setback and she's staying away from it by one additional foot. So yes, she's changing the footprint, but it, it's, it's getting farther away from the property line. Uh, basically, it's a different structure too, and that's, that's where I have the I had the concern. So based on, based on the information that we've researched this evening, we have to determine if it's, uh, if the reconstruction is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. 
And that's why I asked the applicant a while ago to, to explain to me why she thought this was the best, best location, because I need to be convinced that this is the greatest practical placement of the building. And I'm hearing pavement is a concern, but I've also heard the overhang is a concern. So if we're spending the money to build an overhang on the garage to match the house, then a couple of extra dollars for paving shouldn't be an issue. I wasn't thinking about the money. I was thinking about depleting all the grass in the backyard by paving yeah. it over. Well, if I may allow to continue. <laughs> By all means, you're doing fine. Unfortunately, when people, go ahead. when people come to, before us for a variance or a set aside uh, reduction, uh, there's, a, there's a hardship involved. And in most cases, the hardship is going to cost someone some money and it's going to cost someone some compromising to, to get basically what they want. Um, the backyard looks very beautiful. Um, and I know, you, I think one of the letters from, from your neighbors indicates that they want to maintain the, the tree line. Um, concessions are going to have to be made. See, on the um, definitions, building footprint is the area of a building measured from the exterior surface of the exterior walls at grade level. And that's, that's what I've always gone by because of that definition. Bruce? Um, would you take a look at page 33 of the ordinance? Um, and I'm looking at 19-4-3 A, two, small a, single lots. Um, All that says is that a, a, a single lot that's non-conforming can, can use setbacks based on the chart on page 32. That's all it says. Any existing principal or accessory structure may be modified, enlarged, or relocated, even though it doesn't conform to the setback requirements of the district, provided the modification, construction, or relocation conform to the standards in and that's simply referring to the 25-foot side setback? That refers 1943A1A is the chart on the previous page, yes. So that gets us nowhere for this application, correct? Wait, where would you like to go? No, I mean, um, it doesn't help us in oh, answering no, no, this question. No. I guess looking at this, I guess on page 35, the figure, the first figure actually answers some of these questions. Mm -hmm some of the questions that were in my mind uh, as far as example of a large horizontal enlargement of a non-conforming building. David, are you looking for something? Or? Um, I was, but uh, go ahead. Uh, last question of the applicant. Um, the letter from uh, Peter, what is it, Skopinski, um, has asked for four large evergreen trees to be placed on the property line. Could you identify as to where they're going to be placed and, and whose, whose property? Yep. Um. 
the big chart that you have with the architect's rendition of the garage. Mm -hmm. On the back behind the garage? Right, yeah. Because his house is here, and he currently sees nothing to about here. And because it will extend this way slightly, he's asked us to place them approximately here. All right. And how many feet away from the garage would that be? placing them five feet, you have to place them quite a bit farther away from that. That's why I question how you're going to get them on the south side of this and still stay on your property. Uh, I think it's difficult. What type of tree? Are you talking a white pine? Probably spruce. A spruce tree. Still, they, they grow out uh, quite a bit. And, that, and I, I know that's a concession that you made to accommodate your neighbor. Um, and it's not an inexpensive concession. Um, but I think in placing the trees, uh, I'll, I'll listen to the other comments from the board members. Excuse me, <coughs> Mr. Chair. Have, have, has the board resolved the procedural issue yet? As to which section of the ordinance we're under? Yeah, have we? I mean, I, I, there's no point in going on the application. Well, yet. if uh, assuming that we are, in fact, operating under subparagraph 7 on page 34, dealing with enlargements. And am I correct that that's where you think we should be? That's correct. Um, we can grant a further reduction in the side setback, and I'm puzzled by that because I don't see that we're being asked to grant a further reduction. Um, but small i under 7 says that we have to find that the reduction is consistent with setbacks existing for other properties within the immediate neighborhood of the subject property. And if we have to find that, um, I don't know that we have any information or evidence in front of us to permit us to make that finding. And I'd like to hear comments from other people on that point. Well, I mean, that's probably due to the fact that I read that, that, that there wasn't going to be a further reduction in this application um, from what was existing. And that's why I didn't, um, that wasn't part of the application that was on file. Um, I don't May I address that? What's that? May I address that? Sure. Um, in the, the cover letter that I provided, I, I noted that the neighbors to the left, their garage sits two feet from our property line, and our neighbors to the right, their garage sits only 13 feet from their right hand of Butters property line. The picture that I provided that shows the boundary stake of the, uh, my neighbor's garage, that's the two foot. I mean, seven doesn't bear on this, does it? Because seven yeah. <clears throat> says the board may grant the further reduction of the side or rear setback. We're not asked, being asked to do that. Well, that's the point that I raised also. Yeah. 
um, whether, whether that in fact applies. Um. If I may. Please. I, I, to add my two cents and my interpretation, I think seven would, would be in, employed if there was going to be an increase in height of the garage. I think, I mean, my interpretation of this is that it's a reconstruction, and I believe the correct place for us to grant approval or disapproval would be on page 36, I, under section four. I don't interpret um, this as an increase in nonconformity, because my understanding of nonconformity <coughs> would be, has to do with the side setbacks. I then refer back to the, uh, the distances on page 32. And the rear and front setbacks are not an issue. What makes it non-conforming is the side setback. And that is actually being, uh, it's going to be greater than it was before. Um, so I don't, I don't see this as an increase in being non-conforming. Being non -con non I, I think if the structure is going to become larger, <laughs> I think that I would have trouble using number four. But uh, I see this as a as a, a right of reconstruction without increasing nonconformity. And with all the neighbors uh, signing an affidavit on both sides of the street with similar structures, um, and my, my feelings on this, I think that's the appropriate way to proceed. So you think we, we, are, we should be proceeding under paragraph number four on page 36? Yes. So the one element would be in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent? Right. And then my question would be, if that is the case, is there anything that brings in conditional, uh, the conditional use permit section no. of the ordinance? No. And if the conditional use section does not come in, then it doesn't, are we able to grant this conditioned upon the planting of trees? I would say if they meet, it, meet the setbacks to the greatest practical extent determined by the Bononian Court of Appeals, yes. Yes, you think we can add that condition? I believe so. Well. <laughs> Clearly, uh, clearly under 1955, we can add conditions of buffering and screening. Mm -hmm. But if 1955 <laughs> doesn't enter into this, are we within our power to make that a condition? We can do anything we want. If it, if it's practical. If, if, it, if it becomes a practical matter based on the fact that the trees will block and give the neighbor some no. privacy, then I believe the board could probably do that. Yes, we can. So you think we can't add that condition? Well, if it's part of, it's part of the board's of, 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 uh, view, review of the greatest practical extent, if, if indeed that will help block the view based on, I mean, block the project based on the fact that, I don't know, I said it once, and now I'm confused, but. <laughs> um. I don't know what I, I don't know what I said the first time. <laughs> I guess we'll have to play the tape back. <laughs> Ms. Bacall, I don't know that, that an apology to you was appropriate, but this is just a very convoluted ordinance, and the sections don't all fit together as neatly as we'd all like to hope. I've been trying to build a garage that they for might. years. So we're simply trying to make sure we're doing the right thing by you and um, by our obligations as members of the board. So bear with us while we sort it out. Further input? From the Brain Trust to my right. 
No, I think we've done a pretty good job narrowing it down to operating on, uh, under this D4. Dr. Chapmus, do you want to weigh in on this? <clears throat> Bruce, in a normal situation like this, or you're looking at footprint, elevation, and enlargement, is that correct? Correct. Enlargement of footprint. Excuse me? Enlargement of footprint as well as height That's change correct. from the original structure. If, if the height was going to change, become higher within, within the setback of what the old was going to be, then they wouldn't be able to come before the board. They'd have to go for a variance. The height cannot be increased from what was existing in order to use this section, or at least that was my interpretation under enlargement. Since the height is not changing, then that's not an issue, is that correct? That's correct. So the only issue you're looking at is enlargement of footprint or change of footprint re from the existing structure. Yeah, replacement and enlargement, yes. Um, relocation. What, in your capacity, what do you, Upon a, if this plan were approved, you would look at that the proposed footprint as well as elevation profile were maintained as proposed, or do you only look at the footprint? And no, no, I look at I look at to make sure that to sure that the height is not increased, and that you look that, that the height is not increased, and and that the whatever approval the board gives based on these plans, these plans will have to be carried forward with the building permit. And as such, do we need to state in the approval that these plans should be followed as far as elevation? No, because is that any deviation from the elements that were reviewed uh, would, would, would negate any approval that the board gave. That's a, that's a given. Um, if it's something that, that wasn't reviewed as elements that they wanted to change, then that would be that would be a different different situation. But and this is a a bit of a side question. Do, do you have any jurisdiction over the tree placement as requested by a neighbor, as far as a monitoring situation? Only if if the board feels that they can make that a condition, and then I have jurisdiction at that point. And I ask that in, in view of the fact that that was the only uh, concern raised by a neighbor. Has, has that burden been imposed upon you in the past to monitor landscaping in that capacity? Um, yeah, planning board approvals uh, often have conditions for plantings that I have to follow through with. Not so much with the Board of Appeals, no, but the Planning Board, definitely. So not as a condition for uh, an appeals approval? It's not normally a condition of appeals approval, no. Would it be out of place to request that of you in this? Um, I think that's for the Board to determine. Yeah, I, ha I have a question too, Jay, and I see where you're going. Um, and it's a concern that I have. Ms. McCall said that she would plant the trees, and there's no doubt that she's not going to plant them. But the placement of them is important to me because uh, if you place them too close to the building, there's going to be problems down the road. Uh, if you place them too far away, it probably may not do the job. So should we ask for an approved agreement between the abutter and the applicant to resolve this issue prior to a building permit being issued. And that's just a, you know, a question for discussion. But certainly I, I don't want to see a garage built and then a, a civil war over uh, placement of trees or, or trees that aren't, aren't placed. And 
I mean, you, you mentioned that you had a question as to where they were going to go, and you're, you're asking me five feet. I'm saying no, I'd rather see a minimum of 10 feet away from the building. Uh, and your, your, your abutter might not like that. But 10 feet would be the closest that I'd plant trees uh, but not because of the moisture and the damage that it would cause on the garage in future years. No. And that gets them off your property where you're so close. So that's why it was an issue half an hour ago with me. All right, so. Could I respond to that? Yeah. Um, I say yes, to, through the chair, yes. <laughs> absolutely, you may respond. Um, my neighbor has planted his trees on our property in the past with our permission so that his, what he sees from his back lot is greenery and not our stuff. And I would, um, although I don't expect that I, he would want me to plant these trees on his property, I'd be happy to. Um, I'm happy to enter into an agreement with him outside of the planning board um, to put the trees where they will be helpful to him. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, he is going to get the trees. For, he's going to tell us what trees would be best to get. So with regards to the true human part of this, I don't have a problem whatsoever with any requirement placed on me and him. And I would expect that we would prefer to agree on something between the two of us that would work the best for him rather than have you guys have to regulate us. But it's fine with me if you want to proceed that way. Um, I, I don't have any idea about the distance of the trees. And he's the, he's the arborist, so he will know. Well, I'm hesitant to issue, um, to have this board issue any kind of an order that says that we're granting the, per, we're, we're granting the, the relief that you're asking for, conditioned upon you reaching an agreement for landscaping with your neighbor, only to find that you're, at, you're then asked to do something unreasonable. <coughs> And not that I have any reason to believe that your neighbor would ask you to do that, but we wouldn't want to hold you hostage after the fact um, for the construction of what you're trying to do. I mean, it seems to me that we should have something very specific in mind or agreed to if we're going to make it a precondition, if that's the direction we're going. I think it might be helpful to keep in mind that whether or not the neighbors approve it really is not a material matter for the zoning board. Right. If you're going to tie in a condition, you've got to tie it into the, to the fact that somehow it ties into to meeting the setbacks to the greatest practical extent. If you can't do that, then, then you probably ought to stop short. Yes, Mr. Trent Falcon. Yeah, if I may, I concur with Mr. Keneally in that I think the, we've just reviewed this under a, a portion of the uh, ordinance where uh, whether the, the neighbor agreed or disagreed, we think there's uh, legally it's appropriate to reconstruct your garage uh, the way you have planned. Uh, you have entered on your free will an arrangement between neighbors on, on uh, adding some trees, and you uh, both are working that out, and you uh, have submitted a letter. He submitted a letter saying he's for it. I don't think we should put any conditions uh, on this because I don't think it requires it. I think the neighbors are taking care of uh, the conditions. I don't think we have a, a legal footing here to put conditions on this particular agreement. Well, that was my question, you know, some 10 or 15 minutes ago, whether we had the right to place any conditions on it if we're not within the conditional use permit section, which expressly gives us the right to put conditions of buffering and screening in. Um, so. Jack's point is well taken, that, that we've got to consider this application on the merits before us. The fact that you had a, a neighbor that requested the trees, um, and I'm changing my, my thoughts on this, shouldn't be a, a de determining factor on whether we, we grant this request or not. Um, I'm just wondering if the applicant knows how much these trees are going to cost. 
I do. Would you tell me? Um. I mean, I want you to understand that it's not, it's not cheap, and you're looking at 1000 to to $2,000, uh, depending on the particular tree. But uh, the size of the tree, you're looking at a minimum of $250 each plus the planting. Yep. So, I mean, I know it's a tremendous uh, added expense. So that's why I'm thinking, uh, after Jack cautioned us, that uh, we shouldn't hold you hostage, or you should not be held hostage for the planting of $2,000 worth of, of, a, of a buffer. And uh, I think that you've expressed your willingness to uh, accommodate people. And quite honestly, I was not excited about this application before I came in at 7 o'clock this evening. But I think you've convinced me that, that you're willing to work and, and that you've you know, made, made efforts to place this in the best practical location. So with that, I'm going to be quiet. Okay, well, it sounds like we have a consensus among the board members that we are proceeding under 19-4-3B4, reconstruction or replacement. So absent some strong thought to the contrary, I'd suggest we move forward under that. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to present at this point, I have a feeling you've said everything you have to say, but if there is anything more, by all means. No. Okay. Thanks. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this matter? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to it? Okay, then we will close the public comment portion of the hearing. Um, discussion among the board. Personal feeling is that once we've narrowed it down to where we're operating here, it's a fairly easy approval. It's straightforward approval. Would anyone like to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to make the motion only because I want to add something to the finding of facts, if if I may. Uh, I'd make a motion that we approve the applic uh, the the request of Sarah and Edward McCall for um, a replacement of a 12 by 20 foot garage, uh, seven foot from the property line, with a new 18 by 26 foot garage at eight feet from the side right, uh, right side property line, um, based on the finding of facts. And the enlargement does not increase the height of that part of the building within the required setback. There is no further reduction in the setbacks. The proposed garage will be one foot further from the property line, um, and I'm going to insert here um, 2A, that the roof line is not considered a portion of the building and that the, um, the uh, side setback is measured to the foundation, and therefore um, there is no further encroachment on the side, right side property line. The non, three, the nonconformity was created through a change in the town zoning regulations. Four, the, regu the request meets the conditional use standard of section 19-5-5D standards for conditional use. Second. Let me read back your 2A. Go ahead. And see if I have it all. If I, I have a feeling I may have left something off of the end of it. Um, that the roof line is not considered a portion of the building and the side setback is measured from the foundation. Was there something you added after that? Um, I guess we're all going to be watching the rerun of this <laughs> to find out what we said. I, that does it. I mean, that, that says it. Uh, I, I wanted that part of the, of the record that the foundation is uh, where we measure to and not to the, the roof overhang. And I think that, that states it. Bruce, is that? It's fine. I mean, it's, it's your, your interpretation, and well, yeah. you pointed it out, but I, I think the record should. The only should comment is I'm not sure why it has to be in there, but yeah. if you want it in there, you, you I, can. I want it in there. Thank you. Can you tell me what that means? The roof line is not considered a part of the building? It means your overhang doesn't have to count in, in your setbacks to the property lines. 
right? That's correct. And did you include the conditional use standards in the findings? Is that um, because we determined it? That yeah. Did you read number four from the findings of fact? I read. Yes, I did. Or okay. I. I um, I, th I think we determined that con the conditional use standards are not applicable to this request. So we should delete, we should remove from your motion, if you would permit it, um, the reference to the conditional use standards. We're talking the standards on page 52? Yes. And you want to, you want to delete those? No. Well, again, this, you know, going back to the discussion, um, you know, I had asked Bruce whether if we're going under, if we're proceeding under 19-43B4, do the provisions of 1955 conditional use permits enter into this? And the answer was no, they don't. Okay. Now the findings of fact as prepared, I know do refer to conditional use, but it apparently should not refer to those. Well, we can delete it, and that's, that's not a problem. So I would, I would um, request a, an amendment, or actually a deletion to my finding of facts, deleting all reference to number four, the request meets the conditional use standards of section 19-5-5D, standards for conditional use. And Mr. Keneally, will you I will. second that amendment? Yes, I will. Mr. Chairman, may I make one more friendly amendment, possibly, uh, Mr. Fasash? We'll, we'll see. Okay, uh, <laughs> we'll see how friendly. Um, <clears throat> I think in this, one of your first amendments to your uh, proposal, you stated that this height would be no uh, taller than the pre-existing pre structure. Since that structure doesn't exist for the last 10 months, um, just being a, a purist, I think we should install a height of uh, 12 feet or 11.6 feet because uh, there's nothing to measure. I don't think we can. I don't think we can do that. Um. We've already we established the the code office has established the pre-existing height and will assure that the new garage is not increased. <coughs> the plans call for 11 feet 6 inches as submitted, correct? correct. So it, it will have to be built in no, conformity with the plans? No greater than 11 6. I'm going to rely upon the professionals that that, that established number is what the garage was. Um, there have been some efforts to keep it within that, that level. Um, and there's no peak on the roof. It's flat. Uh, like I said, the applicant, it, it appears, has made every, well, has made a number of attempts to uh, stay within the, the ordinance. So based on, uh, based on that, I'm, I, don't, I don't think we should add a uh, restriction on it. Discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? The motion is approved by a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Ms. McCall, your application is granted. Thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you for bearing with us. The next item on our agenda is to hear the appeal of Martin, My is it Meyer? Of Martin Meyer for Daniel and Sabina Friedman, 2 Todd Road, tax map U11, lot 10A, for a front Todd Road property line, variance of 11.03 feet from the required 25 feet, a front shore road property line variance of 6.7 feet from the required 40 feet, 
and a right side property line variance of 4.37 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a second floor to the existing dwelling and construct an addition to the front of the dwelling. Mr. Meyer. Um, are Daniel and Sabina Friedman here? Yes. Thank you. And just um, for the record, before we get started here, are there other people here who wish to speak either in favor of or opposed to this application? And are you gentlemen here to speak in favor of or opposed? Okay, thank you. Just so we knew before we get started. Okay. And everybody will get a chance to speak. Um, if you would tell us your name and address, please. Uh, Marty Meyer, I reside in Yarmouth, Maine. I'm here representing uh, Daniel and Sabina Frieden. Uh, we have we're requesting a variance to an existing structure, which is, uh, has a lot of unique uh, issues with it. it uh, we're basically going up from an existing structure with a second floor in which the existing structure was built within today's setbacks when, when setbacks weren't as stringent as they are today. We also have a, a lot that has a unique shape in it where it's not square, so we have some uh, issues there with the sidelines coming in on the, the front road line on uh, Shore Road. The, uh, it's also unique because it's, it's, there's only, within the neighborhood, the immediate neighborhood of the photographs and stuff I've given you, it, there's only two one-story buildings, this being one and the other one, it looks like it's about a 4,000 square foot house, which is quite large. Uh, it also is in kind of a unique location where uh, it's between lots that are five to ten times larger than that. And on the other side, there are lots uh, that are the same size. And then you go one st street further, and the lots are uh, a half, uh, some almost a third. It's just something I'd just like to pass around because the existing, uh, the tax map I show you, which shows the immediate neighborhood, doesn't show the other side away from these gigantic lots. I'd just like to pass this around so you can get an idea of what, uh, what it looks like shaded in their lot and show you pretty much inside their house form. What the rest of the neighborhood beyond their immediate neighbors look like. So we'll just take a look at that. Uh, the homes in the neighborhood, it is, it is probably the smallest house in that immediate neighborhood if you look at the photographs and stuff. Uh, what they're proposing to do is to put a second floor on and square footage wise it'll be with, within keeping with what's there within the neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of two-story homes right in that immediate neighborhood and uh, love it. Also the Freedmans have looked for a number of years for another home somewhere in Cape Elizabeth. They like Cape Elizabeth and they like their neighborhood there. But they've not been able to find something that was both affordable in, a, in an area that they liked. And they, they like where they are, and they would like to uh, increase the size of that home to accommodate their growing family. They have a small child, as you can see, and Ms. Freeman is, uh, Ms. Freeman is going to have two next month. So their growing, family's growing quite fast. Uh, so uh, I guess if there's any questions. The, the, in, the, the decrease in the setback that is being requested for the Todd Roadside is 0 0.81 feet, yeah. right? Yeah. So about nine or 10 inches. Yeah. There is a, a question that has arised, which we may be able to do what we're trying to do. That's an architectural element about that covered area. 
so it just doesn't blend in and look a lot better. There's an existing set of stairs there, steps, that uh, if you look on the, the survey we have, it shows the steps underneath the, uh, what we're proposing to add for an addition. And if those steps, I'm not sure, do steps fall into the setback area, or are they, how do you, how do you define no, that? No, I don't consider steps. The steps wouldn't be, so then that's a moot point. Questions from the board or Mr. Meyer? I've long been a proponent for doing this to, to properties in, in Cape Elizabeth based on the information that you presented to us, that it's very difficult for people who find a house like this as a starter home and want to stay in Cape Elizabeth. Um, it, it's difficult for them to, to, re, to relocate to something certainly of this size uh, as the family grows. And in this case, I see that you're, growing, you're expanding the house. What about 1,700 square feet? Almost 1,800 square feet. And I can appreciate the reason why people buy these homes um, or bought them several years ago and then want to expand them. And I can also appreciate the fact that you have a tough, a tough lot to deal with here. Um, on the other side of the issue is an affordable house will be gone forever. Um, a home that somebody that would want to move in with limited income will not be able to do so because the house is gone. So it's, it's it's a catch-22 situation, but I can appreciate people wanting to stay in Cape Elizabeth, and certainly this is a good location. Um, I, it's a tough issue. It's a tough issue, but we'll look at the, at the merits. Um, is this on septic or sewer? It's on sewer, I believe. It's on sewer, so the... Uh, Expanding the house back. It is on septic. Yeah. My mistake. I, I was certain it was on. Uh, so. All right. So expanding it back in the buildable, the building envelope would yeah. be difficult because you would lose your septic system. Yeah. And um, I'm sure this ledge there. Is there possibly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it would be, um, and it would be a lot more expensive to do so. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. The, um, if I may, one of the specific criteria that we have to deal with in this is um, listed as 4A here, undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. And specific definition is the result of a variance where the structure is larger or closer to the road or property lines than the average of the nearest 10 principal structures. Um, or in the case of a variance request for an accessory <coughs> structure, the nearest 10 accessory structures. Um, well, it, yeah. Is it, is it closer to, I mean, from this table that you provided, it looks like it is closer than 
almost all the other neighborhood structures. In the immediate area, yes. They, uh, but if you look at what you have on either side of this, there's a very diverse. No, I realize it's a difficult lot situation. And it, uh, it, it's within relationship to this, the houses on that street in the next road over Hillcrest where they are pretty much the same or closer in that aspect where the lots are smaller. And do you have any documentation on that? Pardon? Do you have any documentation on that? Uh, if you look at the plot plan shows, you can read the, just make out that when I passed around, the size of those lots, some are five or 6,000 square feet, I believe, and if you look at that and put a house on it, you can pretty much tell that it's gonna be uh, as close, if not closer to a lot of those setbacks. But the one side, that there are a few houses on Hillcrest that I did measure that were the same. I think there are 25. Yeah, they're 25 and 30 feet. Two of them are 25, and uh, the ones on the other side of the road, which I didn't do, I'm sure, are closer because they are substantially smaller lots. Mm -hmm. Now, the house as it currently stands is set back from Todd Road 14.78 feet. Yep. Is that right? Right in the survey, yeah. So again, we're only moving less than 10 inches closer to Todd Road yes. by the addition. Yeah. And I'm sure if, there's, if that 10 inches was an issue, we could make it work within that keeping it within that same setback from the road. Not going any further, not decreasing the setbacks of, of it at all. Excuse me, you said you're on a septic system, is that correct? Yes, yes, I was mistaken, I thought. Okay, is there any documentation that this expansion is going to uh, overburden the septic system itself? I think that's a provision that has to be provided yeah, to it. Yeah, that's a question because I, I assumed, I guess, that they were on sewer, I, that didn't come up, but I'm sure when we go for our building permit, we'd have to prove that. No, I think you have to system. provide it to us we would so we, can, we have something yeah. to, to base whether it is going to have a uh, significant impact on the septic system. Yeah. I think you have to prove to us uh, that it's not going to overburden it. And when you're doubling the size of the space and... Uh, uh, we're adding one bedroom, which is what septic systems are based on, so... One, two, are, you going, are we going from three bedrooms to five bedrooms? Five? Four bedrooms. Oh, master three, bath. Three okay. The application says number of current bedrooms three, number of proposed bedrooms three. So that's why I didn't request anything more. Well, I'm looking at four on the plan. Yeah. Well, I went by the but application. <laughs> but you can, you know, I mean, yeah, no, that was. Uh, I understand the board's concern, but guarantee the permit is not issued unless unless the septic system meets standards or, or another one is put in. I mean, that's, that's understood no matter what permit comes in. Right. But don't we need that information before we can make a judgment? Well, I'm looking to see where that requirement is. Uh, and if it is in there and we didn't get it because the application said there was no increase, I can assure the board that they won't get a permit unless, it, unless it's taken care of. Well, um, excuse me. I want to make a motion to table this because I'm looking at a couple of things. It says it's a public uh, sewer disposal system on the application. I mean, the application states that it's public. We find now that it's, that it's private. Uh, we said uh, the application says three bedrooms. We're seeing four. Um, so it's a hot night. There's information that's lacking. Um, I would, 
I don't know, maybe we should hear from the, from the residents or the, the people that are, are speaking for this. I think I heard there was some, some, limita some concern, but I would, I would love to table this until we get a few of these issues resolved, but that's just my feeling. What are you looking at, John? I, I see the number of proposed bedrooms is four here. So do I. Uh, Bruce, Bruce said he had three on his application. The application I hear it says four. Yeah. And the application also says public, and they stated private for uh, right. sewage disposal. So right. I understand that. Potential two discrepancies. No, I, my, the application I put in has four proposed yeah. You're correct on. there. Right. That's what we have. I, it was my mistake. I had. Uh, Assumed, I guess, that that was on public oh, sewer. But the well, Mr. Fristassi's point is well taken. Um, you know, Bruce, I uh, didn't take a look at the septic issue because he didn't think he needed to. It indicated that you were on public sewer. Yeah. Well, no. Um, yeah, public sewer is 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 uh, checked. Yes. And it is. I had the Bruce and I had that discussion, and I, I had assumed it was on sewer, and I told him it was, and that, that was my mistake there. Uh, is there sewer nearby? Is it available? I don't know. Does is it in the street? Road there? Henry, it's not in the street. I don't believe so. No. Sure, road's not sewered at all. Not in that section, no. Mm. no. Well, I'm, I'm under the impression that we have to be satisfied that any enlargement could uh, uh, be satisfied by the existing sep septic system. Well, I tend to agree with with Joe, I mean, if, if the private septic system as it currently exists won't accommodate a fourth bedroom, there's no reason for us to go through a discussion of all the different elements required. Do you have any idea how old the septic system is? Uh, have you done anything with it? Probably the original. Yeah, that would, it, yeah, I, you know, I, I wonder how it is an issue. If they are going to put four bedrooms in, they're going to have to prove that that is where they do it to the board or do it when they get a, a playing board. That would have to be a requirement to, to, to get the permit to put this addition on. I don't know why it, it would be a requirement for the variance, what it has Bruce, for. in the normal scheme of things, applicants come to us with their with their septic plans or with their septic approval, don't they? There are certain applications in the book that you would hear that, that, that you would, that it's required that that information be available, such as um, setback reduction situation, I think one of the criteria. But I don't believe under variances that there's a requirement that that you review the septic system, uh, although you can certainly do that if you'd like. All right, could the subject, the variance, be subject to meeting that criteria for the septic system? I mean, if you look down through your questions, um, I think you got you got to make a determination whether based on that information is needed to answer the the practical difficulty standards. And if it is, then certainly the board can can require that. If it isn't, then would probably shouldn't. Well, it's not, it's not one of the practical difficulty elements. Yeah, I, I, it, it's a given. If you yeah. put a four bedroom right. on this house, they increase it, they're going to have to yeah. probably increase that septic system, given that it's as old as it is. Or they're going to have to prove that it will accommodate a four bedroom house. Uh, so I don't know why that would play into a variance, I guess. So, Bruce, what is the procedure on the septic approval? Well, see, a lot of times people will have septic systems um, information available because it helps them with their total application. Uh, 
that there's no other feasible alternative because that area has to be used for septic. Um, in this particular case, that's not an issue because they're not adding on and taking up more space. So what will they need to provide you before you issue a permit, even if we were to hear this tonight? On septic system, for an increase of bedroom, one, one bedroom, if the system is not in substantial compliance with the code, meaning it, hasn't, it was installed after 1973, I believe, or 72, um, then a new system would have to be designed and either recorded to the registry for future expansion or actual installation. If the system was, was, it was put in the ground after 72, then it is in substantial compliance with the code, which means that a one-time exemption is allowed of an additional bedroom, uh, and nothing would have to be done. One of those criteria is going to have to be meet, met in order to, to be successful with the building permit, irregardless of what the board decides here tonight. So whether you have the information or not, that, that aspect of this application will be taken care of. Okay. I suggest we go forward and hear it. I'd like to hear from the public on this. Oh. While they're here. Yeah. Oh, we will. Um, any other questions for Mr. Meyer? Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Thank you. Um, anyone else who would like to speak in favor? If you would step up to the podium, please. And if you would please tell us your name and your address. Ron Katarina, 7 Todd Road. Would you spell your last name for us, please? C-A-T-E-R-I-N-A. -E Thank you. Uh, my only question, I don't object to the additions uh, to the property per se. Uh, my only concern uh, really is the, uh, how close the variance is going to bring the property to, to Todd Road. You know, the, 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 you know, zoning is made for a reason in a community. And, uh, I think if it's going to be too close to the road, which the indications are, uh, then it would change the whole character of the street. Now, so, my only comment. Okay. Now, my understanding and. Tell me if I'm reading this incorrectly here. My understanding is that there is one very small portion of the addition that will be roughly 10 inches closer to the road than the existing house. That's correct. But that's... If, if that is but the that, frontage, which is on uh, road, yes. then fine. There's no particular concern. Was it your understanding that there was going to be more of an encroachment on Todd Road than that? Yeah, and my neighbor and myself indi uh, indicated they had this 11.03 from a uh, feet from the required 25 feet. This is this is what they're at, not No question. That's all my comments were. Well, are, are you still concerned about the extent of the um, reduction in the setback? Or were you under the impression that it was going to be um, closer to the road than it actually much, will be? We, uh, we had, uh, were concerned that it would be much closer to the road than evidently what it's for. Okay. So you have to take the, the variance that's advertised, for instance, 11 feet, subtract it from 25, which brings you back to 14, which is approximately what the house what is already is there at. So no problem. Uh, that's how yeah. it gets there. It, it, the, does, it is confusing. The house is currently set back 14.78 feet from the road. And the, with the requested addition, it would be set back 13.97 feet from the road. There's no question. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak in favor? But 
I have a question regarding that last statement. That's for an additional 30 feet of frontage. Just as a point of clarification, is that correct? There is. I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not quite sure I'm, I'm following. Reading this yes, for, for, for a length of 30 feet. Yes, for That's a length correct. of 30 feet. Right. The proposed first floor addition for a length of 30 feet. Right. It meets the setback that you just specified. That's right. Which is an additional five feet closer for that 30 feet length. Well, that's true. That is true. Um, so let's make sure that you do understand that. Um, it's not just one corner that's being moved roughly nine or 10 inches closer. Um, the whole 30 feet of the front of the house is being moved five feet closer not any closer to the road than it is currently. I think you'll have to look at the drawing. Well, is it 14, is it 14 inches so it's, it's, it's a bit closer by 10 inches or so than what's existing now. For, thir for 30 more feet will be extended out. But that, that could be a little misleading. Dr. Chapman is right. You should look at the drawing. Would you uh, tell us your name, please? Uh, my name is Henry Adams. I live at 3 Todd Road. I'm the neighbor directly across the street. And I have no objection to the uh, proposed construction. I just want to offer my condolences to the Freedmans for their colossal undertaking. <laughs> I think it's going to be quite a job. And uh, the neighborhood is changing, and so be it. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Mr. Trent Fackley. I just wanted to make a, a clarification on the setbacks. Yes. If I may. I, cause I think you made the statement that the house, no, no portion of the existing house at the point of the driveway is moving, any, is moving at all. It's just going in a vertical dimension. At the portion of the driveway? Yeah, where the paved driveway is? That 14, 7, 8 inch is the existing distance that corner of the house. Right. That's not moving at all. That's just the, the house is going to have a second story on it there. The area that's going to be moving closer is further down the length of the frontage where there's a hatch mark on your map, correct? Correct. And that's what, that's what Dr. Chapman was referring to. It's about a 30 right. lineal foot section that is being moved out five feet. But for the public comment, I think the concern is it's a non-conforming lot, so it's not, there isn't 25 feet in the first place between the building and as it stands now. That's what the, that's what comes, it's non-conforming. Right. Okay. Is there anyone else here who wishes to speak in favor? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Friedman, would either of you like to speak? Don't feel compelled to, but if you'd like to, you're welcome to. I, I, I realize how late it is and how hot it is, and I appreciate you guys being willing to stay here and listen to our request. And, um, and I appreciate our two neighbors coming and giving their support and also airing their concerns. And, yeah, basically, we really like the neighborhood. We like our neighbors. We'd like to stay in that part of the community. We've looked for over two years. We have um, two, two babies coming, and we have a little toddler that you can see here. And we just uh, we appreciate you con um, considering our request as we'd like to accommodate our family to stay in the neighborhood. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Friedman. That will close the public comment portion of the hearing. Discussion by board members. If, if I may, I took a look at the, I found the uh, information with the property lots, uh, the facts information, and I circled the corner lots. They would be the ones on 
Todd and Shore Road, both sides of Todd, and also Hillcrest. And the neighborhood is quite diverse by dimensions. And I looked at the supplied photographs of the houses that would be on similar kind of lots, and there would also be a, a budding or across the street from the subject property. And um, I think by architectural drawings that that would fit into the community. I don't, I don't think it would be uh, out of line with the community, if anything. I think it uh, would, would blend in nicely. Uh, and I don't see uh, the hardship uh, by this property being much different uh, than the other two kind of lots listed here, uh, which would be uh, you will, I'm sorry, U10 1A and U10 2. Well, from my standpoint, of all of the practical difficulty cases we have heard, um, in my mind, I've struggled with just about every one of them. I think this is the easiest one, in my mind, to fit into the various elements. Um, the one that was raised by Mr. Keneally, um, the definition of an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood um, with the result of, the, result of a variance where the structure is larger or closer to the road than the average of the nearest 10 principal structures. Um, the, um, with the fact that the net encroachment on the road itself um, is less than a foot from the closest point of the currently existing structure. Um, I think that's minimal enough that it can't reasonably constitute an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. But looking through the other elements of the practical difficulty standard, um, I don't find any of them that I'm troubled with. Well, I, I would agree that's the only one that, that troubles me in a technical sense, but uh, it is a minimal um, incursion. On the other hand, you know, what do we, where do we draw the line? So that's, that's what's in the back of my mind. That, I think it's a very attractive proposal, and I think it meets the requirements in terms of uh, staying in with character of the neighborhood. But, um, the line does have to be drawn someplace. Where would you draw the line? I would draw the line um, at a point where I think it's less than a minimal, in, uh, more than a minimal in, intrusion. You speak like a lawyer, I speak like a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree with you. I, it's, it's a minimal enough that I certainly can uh, accommodate it. Everything that's being done to the house fits very well with the neighborhood. The only problem I have is with the septic system and, and can this small lot in a ledgy area support um, additional usage. Um, That's Bruce's problem. Yeah. We, can put a, we can put a condition on this, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, I think I agree with you, you too, that, that this is, uh, or it was easy before, uh, before we got to the point of about 15, 20 minutes ago on being on a septic system. Um, but I think that, that uh, before I vote on it, I'd have to have some type of... Uh, um, Assurances that it would, it could, and will adequately meet uh, proper disposal uh, standards. Before you vote on it, you want that. Well, as part of the condition, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that there. I mean, I've got no problem with what they're doing. If they were on, on public sewer, you know, I agree with you. This would be probably a no-brainer. But where it's not on public sewer, we do have an issue. Or I think we, I think we have an issue. Well, and I'm relying on our CEO, who's telling us that he's not going to grant a permit unless the well, thank you unless the septic issue is is resolved to his satisfaction. 
standard practice. And what, what standard practice is going to be used, Bruce? Well, I already explained. I already explained the standard practice of any building permit coming for the, for the, for the code office, if, if there's an additional bedroom, that they either, they either have a system that's in substantial compliance or they design and either record or actually install a system that will take the total amount of gallons that, that, that will be used by the number of bedrooms. Right. And how is that going to be determined? That how is that being determined by the records in the code office? Okay, um, and I, may I ask uh, one of the uh, members of the audience a question? It's you, been, you may. Okay, Mr. Adams, do you have any idea when this property was built? No, I don't. No, and you moved in at what, in what year? 'll well, I knew Henry had been in there a number of been there in his home a number of years, and uh, I rely upon Henry's judgment so if it's not a a problem with the board leaving it up to the code enforcement officer to research the records and determine whether this is a septic, a septic system that will handle four bedrooms I've got no problem with it Dr. Chapman a question Bruce the setbacks and I'm not sure who to address this question to. Proposed setbacks uh, on the application show front 13.97. Is that established, uh, I assume, by the <laughs> architect design? And at what point is the closest point? And the, the basis for that question is, is that Looking at this survey, it appears that the closest point to the property, and y'all bear with me while I explain this, the, it appears that a straight line is drawn from the garage across the front of the house. And looking at the left side of the addition, there's a small extension for the front porch. But other than the at the left side or the northwest corner of the addition, uh, the new footprint of the addition is in direct line with the garage. And it's showing the northeast corner, right hand corner of the garage at 14.78. Comparing that with this submitted floor plan, if you look at the extension of the profile of the garage straight across, there appears to be a rather significant bay window extending in front of the garage face or the footprint of the garage in, uh, in view of the garage face or garage door. There appears to be a bay extending out from the face of the house and extending out further than the front porch. So I guess my question is, as far as the closest point, looking at the boundary survey uh, plan of property by Stephen Martin, it shows that the closest point is the northeast corner of the porch. We're looking at the uh, Martin Meyer floor plan, it appears that the closest point might be the bay window. So, and I'm not sure who to address this question to, but it appears to be a discrepancy. Well, I'll tell you the way I read that, and um, Mr. Mayor will give you a chance to respond to this to straighten this out too, but as I look at this, Dr. Chapmas, the, on the, the, the boundary survey that you're looking at, you'll, you'll see under the cross-hatched portion of the addition, it does show the bay window that's drawn in there. I, I think, assume I that think, was existing. I, I don't 
I, I don't think so. When you when you look at the when I looked at the uh, floor plans, it shows the bay window on the first floor. If you look at the upper portion for the second floor, it actually so it shows it sticking out a little farther. This is the way I read it, but maybe Mr. Meyer could well, address on, that. On the front elevation, it shows a bay with with brackets underneath uh, the, the front elevation. Yeah, and I'm, you may be right. I was just, that was the way I had resolved and, and so it. So I interpreted that. that as an extension from the face of the house, which is in line with the garage. Yeah, that's very true. The, uh, the surveyor did miss that when he put that on there, and I, and I missed it when we were kind of in a rush to get into the board. Uh, so yes, the bay window would protrude a little further than the uh, covered entry. The question is, is a window, a bay window, is that an encroachment or, you know, we just had a discussion a while ago where it was to the foundation. So I don't know if that's, you know, and steps aren't required in a setback. So is this bay window hanging out there an extra six inches? If, if, a if bay, if the way I've always interpreted bay windows or bow windows is that if it extends down to the foundation and, and there's a floor area, uh, then it's part of the set, it has to meet setback. But if it's simply a window coming out of the face, uh, such as this one, then I have not considered that part of the footprint. And what because is this one? It just doesn't go to the floor. It's hanging out there. It's an existing window we're moving out, basically. And you, uh, you can see it on the photograph, whether it extends down. Uh, no, nah, the bushes are in front of it, so. But it would be just a window hanging out there with brackets. Can you, not. how far is the face of that window from the face of the wall for that bay? I couldn't tell you exactly, but it'd be, most bays run about one foot nine inches out to two feet in that range. So you're probably talking an additional foot if you were to. So from a look and feel standpoint, there'll be a portion that is up to two feet closer. Yes, to, to the from road. that, 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 that bay portion. Would, yes. yeah. So the survey you've given us should show the bay window sticking out two feet farther than it shows it, well, currently it doesn't show it well, I guess we need to establish if the bay window. Even meeting the uh, second story. Pardon the. Well, the survey should show the bay window sticking out two feet farther than the front edge, from the Todd Road edge of the building. Yes, if you are to require it as that bay window being part of the footprint. I guess that is the question. Is that bay window need to meet that setback? Okay. As we don't, you know, again, it goes back to, you know, our steps and required into it. It goes to the, the uh, foundation, and this, this is, is a window. It's not a, a walkout bay that you would, the whole floor and stuff would come out with it. So. But yes, it would be the window does project out further than the covered porch area. Is the existing bay on the house, is it also a bracketed type yes. bay? Okay. And it, they show that on the existing survey uh, underneath the hatch yeah. mark. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't show it when we, uh, with it. He got the footprint and covered it. I don't know why it wasn't shown on there, but. Will that fall underneath the roof line completely? It would probably have its own roof line came out a little bit. Again, it, it won't be much different than the, well, it's gonna be, it won't be much different than what's there. Basically, it falls under the roof line now, which we'll probably will be in keeping with the, what we're gonna do.
It's not shown on the right side elevation as protruding beyond the, the front porch. Is that a correct um, depiction or is it, uh, is that another oversight? That would stick out on this, yes. It would stick out beyond? Yeah, what you see there on that left elevation. It doesn't show what's beyond that garage, that elevation. How important is that bay window to the overall scheme of things? Uh, so how important is that? I guess I've got to go back to, we, you've established tonight, I've heard you establish that the, the setbacks are to a foundation, that overhangs are not considered in that setback, uh, the steps are not considered in that setback. Uh, we have a window that is hanging out there. It's not, a floor system does not come out there. It basically is within the overhang of the roof. Is it an issue with the setback? Your point is well taken, and I agree with you. I didn't agree that the overhang on a garage <laughs> was uh, was yeah. uh, in compliance. I felt that it was certainly not in compliance. Yeah. Uh, so. This is more than an overhang on a roof. Uh, it's you had an app, uh, a neighbor earlier this evening. Unfortunately, he's left. Spoke in opposition to any intrusion Road. closer to Todd Road. So, yeah. um, I guess if it's obviously. You know, if this is granted, this 30-day, this is 30-day waiting period. Uh, something can happen between now and 30 days. Um, it's been brought up that it's, it was an oversight on the application, another app, another oversight on the application. So, you know, my feelings are, um, well, you heard my feelings earlier. Um, I wish the the neighbor hadn't left because, uh, you know, his specific purpose to come here tonight was to say I didn't want it any closer to Todd Road. Um, this may not be considered um, part of uh, an encroachment by by the ordinance, uh, but I'm a I'm a board member and I and I have to vote and I don't think that window that bay window is certainly going to affect the. The character of the building, one way or the other, I don't think it's going to uh, change um, the overall benefit. Right? But it may be may upset a neighbor, it may upset someone. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've seen enough people okay. uh, come before us in in previous years that didn't like what we did and went to another court. So, Jay's point is well taken that uh, it wasn't on the plan. It was you amended. There was an oversight by the surveyor. Um, if it didn't extend beyond the porch, I wouldn't have an issue. Mm -hmm. All right, it's extending beyond the porch, so I have an issue. There's certainly alternatives that you can do. Uh, put in a shorter bay window. Uh, yeah. But <clears throat> I'm. Uh, Dr. Chapman. In principle, I agree with the the points and justifications that you made mm -hmm. for this addition and enlargement of the house. And I support that. I am having a bit of a issue with the with the discrepancies in the, uh, yeah. in the application, where it clearly states public and it mm -hmm. private. The elevation uh, does not reflect the bays. The profile does not reflect the bay. And along the line of the fact that earlier the the one argument against was based on a 10 inch closer to the road structure. Yep. Now we have two feet for a bay window. And I, I just think this should be cleaned up and clarified 
on your plan, possibly on the survey. Uh, my, my goal is not to increase cost to the applicant at all, mm -hmm. but I think we as a board do need an accurate application and accurate, accurate renderings and profile so that we can visually see the impact that it is going to make mm -hmm. to the neighborhood. And there are a few discrepancies that don't reflect the, that accurate uh, rendering that I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. uh. And I don't know how to proceed with that procedurally, but I would like the application corrected and, and, <clears throat> and the proposed plans corrected. I guess, uh, excuse me, but would you? Do you want to keep the bay? How important is the bay? Yeah, we. Well, Dr. Chamas, thank you for that line of inquiry because um, I certainly didn't read the plans that way and I think I was a little bit misled by the way it was drawn and I didn't understand that there was that additional intrusion either. So thank you for bringing that up. As far as the correction to the plans or to the application, um, I don't think it's something that we can request or that we need request to be corrected in this case. I mean, you've done a good job of bringing out the discrepancies. Um, hopefully, the board fully understands the application in its true form at this point. Um, are there any other discrepancies that you're aware of? in the application or on the drawing that? I hope, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, yes? I, no, I said I hope not. I don't believe there is any okay. discrepancy. No, that, that was not intentional by any means uh, at all. So uh, I guess. OK, thank you. Further discussion? Well, why don't we, shall we go through the elements? Or is there a motion before we get to the elements? There's been some question and some concern whether we can put conditions on an application. <coughs> Based on the concerns that have been voiced, uh, not only this evening but in other evenings, uh, I'm uncomfortable with this application. As I indicated earlier, uh, because of the discrepancies, because of the concerns, uh, um, I find it difficult to vote to vote on this this evening, uh, certainly in the way that the applicant wants it to vote it on. So um, I, I'd either, I think I'd like to make a motion to table this to clean up the odds and ends and to revise the plans as opposed to putting a condition on it. If we went forward on it tonight, if, if my motion is, is, is uh, rejected, then I would, I would make a motion to eliminate or at least to limit that bay window from any um, further uh, intrusion on, on Todd, Todd Road. But having said that, I'd, I'd like to have some other input, but that's the way I'm feeling. I'm, 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 fe I'm voting. I'm going to vote against the application this evening 
if it, if it comes to, to, that, uh, to that vote uh, because of the discrepancies, all right? And be, because a resident or an, an, a neighbor came up and was told that it wasn't going to go any closer to Todd Road, and then it is. We, we find out later that it is after he's left. So I'm uncomfortable about that, uh, among a couple of other things. But having said that, I'd like to hear what other board members want to do. If I'm Mr. Trent Falcone. Yeah. Um, well, there, there are several issues, and I, and I think it uh, is somewhat sticky. The discrepancies that I've seen uh, to date, one is the septic system, and I think that's going to be addressed, uh, and I feel comfortable that being addressed by, uh, by Bruce. The second issue, um, the, the neighbor's complaint from, uh, unfortunately he wasn't here, because one of the points I was trying to bring up is that the words that I heard him say is he was referring to the 25 feet. And the reason why I was trying to say it's, an, it's a, it's a uh, non-conforming lot in the first place, and the home is actually 14 feet, and we're talking, you know, uh, in, in my, again, I don't want to put my interpretation, I think he had concerns of the building, I think, coming much closer to the street. But I think legally, again, the, the third issue is the bay window. And the discrepancy there, it's not on the plan, but what merit does that have it has a merit to the perception of the neighbor, but in terms of the merit to the rules that we're going by, um, Bruce has told us that since the bay window doesn't go the entire length of the building, that it is not featured in the setback. So if it stuck out two feet, that would not be the measured point for the setback, but the, the building wall would be, which hasn't changed. Now, the, the, the problem is, is there's so many little innuendos here, but I think if we look purely at what the discrepancies are and what we're making the decisions on, it's not the cleanest application, and, the, and the, uh, uh, I think some of the drawings might not be drawn to scale, but does it affect a decision-making process? And, and I, I just leave that up to you. I understand your point, but clearly we had an individual that came up here to speak or, or to, to have a, he had a concern about this, clearly. And he was told one thing and something else is happening. And that is my concern, all right? I'm, I'm his advocate. I'm defending his position. But I also saw that there were several other things in this application tonight that wasn't as it was presented to us last week when we got the packet. Things have changed. And because of that, I'm concerned. And that's why I want to make sure everybody understands that. The worst thing that can happen is we can give these people the approval to make the changes. They get the roof off, and this individual takes it to Superior Court halfway through the process. So that is, that is my concern, and I certainly don't want to see that happen. But because of the problems, because of discrepancies, I, I want to get them resolved or at least have it withdrawn before I vote on it. And I say withdrawn the bay window. And I, and I understand what you're saying about the code enforcement officer's interpretation. However, it's so close that I think that we should take another look at this and not make a, a, a hasty judgment. But again, that's my opinion, and, I'm, and I am one. Um, I don't. I don't think what you're characterizing as the code enforcement officer's interpretation is really an interpretation it's in the regulations. Uh, um, the extent of the structure is based on its foundation or its walls, not by a protrusion from the face. And so I think that I'm disappointed, too, that the drawings don't show this correctly, but I don't think it's a legal issue for us. Um, I don't think there's any grounds for appeal based on that, since it's an extension from the face, not going down to the ground. Um, and I, I, too, am quite comfortable with Bruce dealing with the septic issue problem, which he's the proper person to deal with it. So um, I, I share your discomfort about some of the discrepancies, but I don't think they affect our decision-making process here. With regard to the gentleman who spoke in opposition, or at least his, voiced his concern about the extent of the encroachment, um, as we have done in the past, including tonight, we've considered whether it's appropriate to weigh in the concerns of neighbors. Um, 
And although we hear them, there is really nothing in the ordinance among the elements that addresses concerns of neighbors. I mean, it's our obligation to vote up or down on the various elements based on the merits of the project itself. Um, obviously, one of the things we consider is um, undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood, um, adverse effect on the natural environment, um, casting a shadow on an adjoining lot. There are any number of things that tangentially certainly affect neighbors that we have to consider, but none of those directly address concerns of neighbors. Um, that being said, we're all very attuned to concerns raised by neighbors. And we have voted in favor of projects that have had the support of, neighborhood, of a neighborhood where we would have certainly rejected the proposal had any of the neighbors complained. Um, my point is that I hear loud and clear the concern of the neighbor, and I don't discount that at all. Uh, I just think it's something that having heard, we can go forward with, um, make a determination on the merits. Um, I'm reluctant to uh, require that the Freedmans wait additional time um, and cause them further delay because of shortcomings in the application and the drawing, neither of which they prepared. Yes, sir. Um, no, not, not at this point. Thank you. So I'd be in favor of going forward um, based on what we have, but sharing in the disappointment expressed by the other board members that the information that we were given was not um, as accurate as we would have liked it to be. So, do we have a motion to table? It appears as though it will be defeated, so the answer is not from me. Okay. Well, then why don't we go through the various elements? Um, and this being a request for a variance under the pra practical difficulty standard, we have a checklist of, that helps us walk through these various elements, so let's go through them. Um, and we're under section 19-5-2B1 of the ordinance. Uh, but the first element, um, can I see a show of hands from board members um, who believe that there is no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance? And that's found in the affirmative by a photo. Five in favor, zero opposed. Um, a show of hands of those board members um, who find that a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30-A, Maine Revised Statutes Annotated Section 43534C. And bear in mind that to find in the affirmative on this, we need to find two other things. First of all, practical difficulty is defined as an occasion where the strict application of the ordinance to a property precludes the ability of the property owner to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district in which the property is located and results in significant economic injury to the property owner. And then significant, econ significant economic injury is defined as placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but no, in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. So with those two definitions in mind, um, a show of hands of all those um, who find that there is, in fact, a practical difficulty. It's found in the affirmative by a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Um, a show of hands of board members who find that the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general circumstances of the neighborhood. 
Now it's found in the affirmative by a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Um, a show of hands of those board members who find that the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. Um, and of course, in determining that, we have to determine the effect of the property that the variance would have on the effect of blocking an established view, posing a fire safety hazard, casting a shadow on an adjoining lot, reducing the appraised value of an adjoining property by 10% or more, or eliminating the privacy of an adjoining property without an effort to mitigate the lost privacy. And we've already gone through the definition of an undesirable change in the character of a neighborhood. So, um, all those who find that the variance will not produce an undesirable change. That is found in the affirmative by a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Um, those, a show of hands of those who find that the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. That's found in the affirmative, five in favor, zero opposed. Um, those, a uh, show of hands of those who find that no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner, and we have a definition for that in the code. Um, all those who find that no other feasible alternative to a variance is available? Um, opposed? Abstain? Um, all those who find that the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. That's found five in favor, zero opposed. Um, and those who find that the property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. That's found in the affirmative by, affirmative by a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Now, for a variance under the practical difficulty standard, in order to grant a variance, at least four members of the board must affirmatively find each of the elements that we just uh, walked through. Um, the board failed um, to find affirmatively by a vote of at least four board members um, on the element of no feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. Um, having found, having failed to um, find in the affirmative by a vote of at least four board members. Um, could I have a motion from one of the members of the board uh, substantially as follows. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals has found that the applicant has failed to meet the applicant's burden of proof in establishing that all conditions specified. In section 19-5-2B1 of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance has been met. Um, I move that the application for a variance of Eleven point oh three feet from the required twenty five I'm sorry. Um, move that the application for a variance of a front Todd Lied, I'm sorry, of a front Todd Road property line variance of 11.03 feet from the required 25 feet, a front shore road property line variance of 6.7 from the required 40 feet, and a right side property line variance of 4.37 feet from the required 25 feet to, to construct a second floor to the existing dwelling and construct an addition to the front of the dwelling. Um, as specified in the application, uh, be denied. Somebody make a motion to that effect. 
Hearing no motion, um, do we want to have further discussion on the element of no further, of no other feasible alternative to, alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner? Dr. Chavez. I'd like to hear the point that Mr. Meyer wanted to make earlier. You requested to make a statement. I'd like. Okay. Mr. Meyer, if you'd come up to the podium, please. If you still wish to comment, I'd like to hear what you had to say. Well, I was just thinking while you were talking about your points uh, are very well taken and understand they're, they're realistic, which, which helps things too. But I got thinking about what would, what would change in the application. Uh, basically, we, we, we have to address the, the sewer issue, which definitely will be taken care of at some point in time. That would be checked differently on the application. The bay window would be shown appropriately on the pictures, but the question there is, would that setback reduction change? That what we're asking for on that front Todd line, would that number change? Uh, I guess that's more of the issue with the, with the bay window in, in that encroachment. And, uh, I understand what you're saying. Yes, it's, a, it's realistic. But would that, under the definitions of where you measure to the foundation or to an overhang, would that number change? So how much would actually change if we redid that? My concern with that is that once we have broached the setback restrictions, then it becomes somewhat subjective. Mm -hmm. And in this point of are there feasible alternatives, uh, comes into play, and that is in the sense that this bay window, since the house is visually mm -hmm. close to the road, that that bay window comes into play not from a code enforcement standpoint, but from a look and feel standpoint. Yep. And Absolutely. the question that I have to ask you and the applicants is, is that bay window a necessity for this remodeling and reconstruction, which I endorse, as I said earlier, mm. or is it simply motivated desire? And that's the question I have to ask at this point. And from a look and feel standpoint, that will have an impact on setbacks from the road. Yeah. Based on the front elevation, if that is a three-foot front door, then the bay window is the, 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 the broad side of the bay window is five feet plus and with the extensions on either yep. side. So you're talking about a, a, a not a small element on the front of the house that's encroaching an additional two feet beyond what you have requested. And I'm asking that from a look and feel standpoint. That, in my mind, could be an impact to a neighbor who earlier we were talking about inches and now we're mm -hmm. talking about a significant uh, uh, structure. So is that uh, yeah. a necess necessity yeah, or is it a motivated desire? And that's yeah, my question. Absolutely. Uh, that could be pulled back, maintained. We could maintain that, keep that bay, and stay within the, uh, the setback we're asking for. Keep the bay window within that setback. We pull back the face of the house with the, the bay window and meet the setback that we're asking for. And that may be a good alternative to this. Now, would, if you can put that in as a... I would feel more comfortable. If we that. put that in as a requirement or should we table it and how would you handle that? I don't... If, if resubmitted plans reflecting what you just said uh, could be submitted. In my mind, I don't see a need to table it any further. Yep. If if we make that condition that a revised set of plans, that the plans are revised to Two. correctly and accurately reflect your intent mm -hmm. from a from what I just profile said. standpoint, yes, yeah. aerial profile as well mm -hmm. as an elevation, and that 
this appears to be computer generated, so I would assume that'd be a relatively easy yeah. request to mm -hmm. to uh, to meet. Yeah, yeah and, it's very. And I would feel comfortable at that standpoint yeah. if you would modify. It is uh, a gray area. I agree in that. Yeah, okay. it should be addressed. Thank you. Very good. Before you sit down, thank thank you for that concession, but I have a I have a. I think I've got a problem. Your porch is showing a five foot, a five foot depth from the house. It yeah. extends out. Yeah. I was subtracting five feet yeah. from 18.97, and I'm getting 13.97. Following me? Yeah, I'd have to see the numbers You're from okay. that corner of the house. I'm referring to the. <coughs> The corner of the front porch to Todd Road. Yeah. All right. On the driveway side, it's 14.78. Yeah. The application and the request is asking for a property line variance of 10.22 feet. If I take the 10.22 and add it to the 14.78, I get the 25 feet. All right. Your application, and I need someone to. It, it's cantered a little bit. It's at an angle a little bit to Todd Road. If you notice the, the dimension to the corner of the house on the other side. I'm looking at the corner of the house. Is not exactly point, the. It's 18.97. Yeah. And then your, your, your porch is out five feet. So it would look like that portion of the, of the porch is going to be as close to the, prop, uh, the street is 13.97, which is not what the application is requesting. Joe, I, I think that um, you may be looking at the notice. Yeah, I've got 13.9 on what I the, the notice shows 10.22, uh, and again, this is a case just like the last one where the notice, I think, is incorrect. You're right. And this is, yeah. But the application shows 13.97. Yeah. I was, again, this is another, I was confused by this also when I first looked over it. So your, your question is understandable. I was confused. I agree. No, my position hasn't changed from uh, an hour and a half ago. I still won't make the motion to table this. Well, in the interest of moving this forward, um, I asked for a motion consistent with the vote or consistent with the findings that we had made. Um, and I'll make a motion to deny the application based on the, mo the findings um, uh, found on the uh, practical difficulty um, requirements. You don't have a second. I make a motion to table this until the, we can correct all the deficiencies that have been uh, found this evening. Well, I don't know that we weren't going to have a second on it. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I was just uh, procedurally thinking back to where we were. I was asking for that motion, didn't get it. I said, let's, do we want to go back and revisit the findings on the no other feasible alternative to a variance? is available to the petitioner. Dr. Chapmas asked that Mr. Meyer come up for some questions. Um, I think at this point we ought to revisit the vote on, or our, our vote on that one finding as to whether no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. And if the findings, if our vote on that finding remains as it was, then. I'm not letting you get there. The motion is going to be appropriate. 
Um, going back to the findings, um, can I have a show of hands from those board members who find that no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner? Okay, two in favor. Opposed? One opposed and abstaining? Dr. Chapman, did you vote on that round? No, I have not. Okay. What, what do we do? David, uh, I'm wondering if, in fact, you know, where this was advertised incorrectly, sure. and, I, and I still say it's incorrect, whether we are going to be faced with some questions down the road. Excuse me, could, could I request? Uh, no, not at this point. Not, not where we are right now in this okay. discussion. I, just, but, but I think it's clear yeah. for everybody. For the, for the record, I am in favor of what they want to do. All right. I, I support what they want to do, but because of the discrepancies, I have a hard time voting for it at this time. And that's why I, I encourage them to take it off the table, clean it up, and then bring it back, in which point I'd give them my vote. And it seems as though my vote is one that is causing problems. But I just don't like the inconsistencies and the errors in this application, especially because we had someone from the audience speak against, <coughs> against going closer to Todd Road. If that person were here tonight and he said, I don't have a problem with it, then I would say, I don't have a problem with it. So I'm giving him 30 days to come before us and say, I don't have a problem or the applicant make a change. Well, or, um, you know, there's, there's four others on this board and they can vote me down. So. But it, it, clearly, the survey shows that they're not 14.8, uh, 7, 8 feet from the road. They're 13.97. The application or the, or the notice requested 14.78. They're asking for more tonight, and it's been the position of the board not to grant this if it wasn't advertised as 14.7 uh, um, or 13.97. Uh, Do we have a motion to table? Make a motion that we table this so that we can correct the discrepancies presented before us tonight, and if need be, to re-advertise this to show that they're requesting a 13.97 front yard setback instead of the 14.78 that was previously advertised. Can I have a second? I'm, I'm going to second Joe's motion because I'd rather table it than defeat it and uh, let them bring it back in a month. Uh, with a cleanup application, I'll support that too. And let me let me also say, Jack. Thank you for the second. Let me also say that if this was defeated tonight, then I would make a motion. If it was cleaned up in a later time, that I would make a motion to reintroduce this to the board for reconsideration. I support what they want to do, but I just don't want them to be in an ugly st situation if the residents find out that it's not. 14.75, but in fact, 13.97. Uh, that's all. Well, I'm going to vote in favor of your motion to table because I'm clearly in favor of what they're trying to accomplish. Um, and I can see that if it goes forward tonight, it's going to fail. Um, so I agree with what you're saying. Um, I respect the fact that you're saying that you're in favor of the project, but not under the conditions and in which has been presented to us. Um, and I'll support the motion to table for that reason. And there may be also two additional board members here that will think positively on this next month. All those in favor of the motion to table? The matter is tabled by a vote of five in favor, zero opposed. Now what? What exactly is the setback we are asking for on the front? I mean, I thought we were. 1397. It's going to be as close as 1397. That's correct. Well, the variance of 11.03, uh, 
that was advertised is correct, then. I'm confused. Well, that's not what was advertised, though. What was advertised was 10.22. Do you have a legal advertisement? What, what have you got that I don't? Know? Oh no! Well, maybe I don't. I'm looking. That's 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 my. The, that's the notice that I didn't make a change on when I found out it was an error. The eleventh, the right advertisement was 11.03. What you see on this notice was, was what was advertised. 11.03. What was advertised with the variance for, of 11.03 to the front Todd Light coffee line? Is that not right? That's what I'm trying to where, well, where were you the last? If it was advertised as 11.03, as 11 then it doesn't need to be re-noticed. It'll just give the applicant an opportunity to clean up the application and the drawings and submit them in proper format. And how do I proceed? Because there's no notification, uh, do I make a special call to the neighbor alerting him that there's a bay window that that doesn't need to be setbacks that he might be concerned with? Is that, I mean, I'm not sure how to proceed here. Because well, no our understanding is that the drawings are going to be resubmitted m with a concession on the extension of the bay window so that the bay window doesn't extend any further than the drawing currently shows the intrusion into the setback to be. Am I correct in that? Is that what you're expecting, Dr. Chapman? That's that's what our discussion was earlier, and that would be my desire. Well, well I've got option to go to the neighbor and ask the neighbor if he has a problem with. I mean, I, that was part of the issue. Well, I mean, Dr. Chapman's made the point that it's also a look and feel matter. And it is a busy road. It, it's very close to the road, and that additional extension does contribute to the look and feel of it being even closer. So I, I appreciate your concession, too, and I, I look forward to having that in the next plans. I think, if I may make a comment regarding my posture in, in general, and that is that since I've been sitting on the board, we've had at least one other situation where submitted plans for uh, elevation profile, there was uh, charges that it was changed from the submitted plans. It's my desire, as long as I'm sitting on the board, that the plans that are submitted to us are the ones that are acted upon and that they are accurately acted upon. Uh, whether it's in the code enforcement officers uh, ordinances or not. If you submit us plans that show roof overhang or bay windows that the code enforcement officer is not obliged to recognize, I still would like the plan submitted to reflect your intention and your outcome accurately. And that's, that's my point. Uh, n not at all uh, trying to look at Bruce's jurisdiction differently. But if, if you submit plans and profiles and footprints, they should accurately reflect your intention, or the builder's or the applicant's intention. And that's, that's simply my desire, that everything that is presented to us is, is accurate. And, that, and that, I, that's my request. And but for the record, as I spoke before, and I'll speak again, that, that if, if this board starts to, to require as part of the approval that those plans be forward, put forward and, and never change, and that's basically what you'd be saying, that, that I don't know how I track hundreds of applications over the next 10 years that come to the board. Um, I mean, I, I just don't know how I could do that. I granted, I, I believe that the setbacks to property lines should be honored, and the, and the site plan should be clearly show that. But when it comes to a facade approval by the board that has to be carried forth from this day on, would be almost an impossible task for a code officer to keep up with. And, and the board needs to recognize that as a, as a definite problem for code enforcement. I understand what you're saying. That I was not at all indicating window placement, door placement, or anything of this nature. Uh, 
I was indicating more of, of elevation, roof line, and, and footprint. Now, is, is that also uh, a, difficult, a difficult thing to... Well, track? certainly the footprint would be the site plan. When we're talking about a facade approval, though, um, by the board, uh, that's when it becomes a problem. Well, my intention was not to uh, burden the, the placement and the design of the house. I was more concerned with the, uh, the footprint and the, the roof line and, and things of this nature that could be objectionable to a neighbor, and, and I guess that's how I'm looking at it. Not, not wind and door placement or siding or, or anything of this nature. Uh, uh, we certainly understand that there are changes that are made uh, on the fly in any construction. And because this, the, the site plan is accurate if indeed the bay window is not protruding beyond what's shown here. It's accurate tonight. It's accurate at this point. If there's no bay window protruding from the face? Correct. Okay. So and I'm not sure what would be changed on the site plan. I, I thought we were heading in the direction that, that, that the neighbor would be notified of, of the bay window, uh, and he could have input into that. I thought that was the main concern, by oh, you anyway, Joe. It was my request or desire that these plans reflect the site plan. I think we had two different arguments, Bruce. My concern was, yes, the, the bay window, the, the uh, protrusion of the bay window beyond the front porch. When that concession was made, I was prepared to change my vote. But then I noticed, and I wish that you had made the comment prior, that that setback appeared to be 13.97 feet was, was, um, was less than the 14.75. And I was looking at the finding of facts. And that's how I did my computation. Yeah, this, yeah, had, you, had you said something earlier, Bruce, I probably would not have any objection. See, I wasn't looking on this. This is a, this is a work in draft. That's exactly, exactly. But that's what I was looking. We've got I, quite a bit before us, and I was to that page. We were, we were on the closing arguments, and I was on that page, and I noticed that. I went to the site plan, all right, and I saw that there. At no point did I see 13.97. Uh, at no point on, on the site plan did I see that. And that was the number that we should be looking at, not at the 18.97 or the 14.78. We should be looking at the shortest distance from the road to the property, which would have granted us the, well, that would have been the, the, uh, uh, the setback requirement. And I would have been comfortable seeing that, seeing that it was advertised. But I didn't see it. Now, but would it be an order for us to reconsider? Because of the, of the, would it of be an order for us? problem, though. That, is that correct? You advertised it correctly. You pointed out to me that you advertised it correctly, and therefore my concern has been addressed. But was it tabled because it was advertised wrong? That was one of the reasons. But would it have been tabled anyways? I wouldn't have made the, the motion to table it. I was under the impression, please understand this, I was under the impression that it was advertised as 10 point to two feet from the required 25 feet. And I was grasping at that point to f figure out where you were getting that from. Okay. And I understand I got that it. you got it from here. All right. What had happened was, was this was advertised wrongly based on this, and it was re-advertised the next day based on the notice that's here. This is the legal notice. So that's why it appeared twice in the paper. Right. And it didn't get changed on this draft copy. Okay. Had you brought that up before but, we but voted? See, I didn't know this hadn't been changed okay. until you brought it up at the right. end. I'm looking at the notice, which was the legal notice that was posted in the paper, which was correct. So I didn't think there was an issue with that. We were looking at a draft worksheet. This is all this is is a worksheet for the Bruce. Board. I understand completely. Please let me let me uh, speak. But I I wish well, I'm I'm a little bit concerned because if if it was. If it, the reason why you tabled is because it was advertised wrong, and that was the only reason, then 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 I think we need to reconsider that. But if it was, if there were other reasons to go along with that, then then okay. Bruce, that was one of the reasons. That was just another discrepancy that was located, all right, 
And I had said this, I think it was 8 o'clock we started, we started discussing this. I wish that you had corrected me prior to the vote, all right, or at least say, wait a minute, let's take a break and look at it, only because that I'm looking at the site plan, Bruce. I'm looking at the site plan, right. and I don't see it. But I do need to make this clear that this is a draft worksheet, that things could be wrong you've on made that and clear. they can be changed at any you, time. You've made that perfectly clear, okay. and I'm trying to, to explain to you why I, I, I made a motion to table it so you have a better understanding of what to talk to the people about, or at least maybe I'm, I'm about ready to ask the question, should we reconsider this based on the information <clears throat> brought forth by you just a short while ago that it was advertised correctly? That was my major concern. All right, it was advertised. We have been, but the whole discussion until 15 minutes ago had nothing to do with that figure. Well, that's it, it, it was the tabling done. That's all I'm asking. Was but it was it was based, based on that figure. It was based on that figure. So you tabled it because the it chair, was advertised wrong? Is that what I'm hearing? That was one of the reasons. Did you table it simply because... Well, wait a minute. I'm not on trial here, Bruce. Yeah, no, yeah. Now, Bruce, that, that's not a question that, that necessarily needs to be answered at this point. Um, I, I would like to make a motion for us to go in executive session so we can discuss why we tabled this and what we should do right now. Can't do that without attorney, I believe. But, uh, Mr. Keneally's correct. All right. Then, then we don't we don't table. Then we discuss it here. Now, one of the reasons why I decided or that I made a motion to table this was because of the number of discrepancies. The major one, and David, I think you and I talked on this one a bit, is the fact that we thought that they were asking for a 10.22 um, variance. And in fact, it should have been greater. But now we find out from the code enforcement officer that in fact it was advertised correctly and that that to me isn't an issue because he did the job properly, corrected the mistake, advertised it properly so that everyone was put on notice that it was 11.22 feet or 11.03. 11 so that is a concern that I'm comfortable with. The other concern that I was concerned that, that I had uh, regarding this application was the the window protruding out towards um, Todd Road. The applicant has made a concession that it would not. So there's two reasons why I wanted to table this, Bruce, and now I'm comfortable with it. And I have got no problem at all since I made the motion, and that I was one of the the people that voted in the affirmative, to take it off the table and vote for this this evening, based on those two, two corrections. Now, I know Jay's point is well taken, too, that we have a plan. Bruce brought, brought it to his attention that the plan is, in fact, correct, that it does not show that it's protruding beyond the 13.97 um, feet. Again, I'll, I'll put that on the table for, for the board's consideration. Is that something we want to do this evening? I know this it appears to be an urgency in, in moving forward with this, but the two, two major problems have been addressed this evening. And I know we're going back and forth. No, well, that's I know okay. We are. I mean, I, I wish I'm, Bruce, well, I'm, I'm glad Bruce, to go had, back and forth if it will benefit had Bruce yeah. brought this to my attention earlier, I never would have made a motion to, ta to table it, that it was advertised correctly. All right. I would have, and, and the concession was made previously, Bruce, that, it would, that, that they would not extend the bay window out beyond the 13.97 uh, feet. Well, that being said, if you would like to make a motion to, I don't know whether the proper motion is to reconsider the motion to table or to remove the matter from the table this evening, um, I think either one will get us where we need to go. I'll make a motion to remove it from the table so that we may reconsider the two factors that uh, we were concerned with that being 
the uh, advertising of the of the uh, uh, requested variance setback uh, distance, and the um, and that basically that was it. Okay. There's been a motion to um, remove the matter from the table. Is there a second? Um, all those in favor of the motion? We want to have discussion. Oh, uh, take it off. I'm, I'm not sure there is no. discussion on it. Um, I'm sorry. The motion is granted by a vote of five to zero. The matter is back on the table. Um, where we left off on this, we've gone through um, a list of all the elements. Um, all of the elements required for approval of a variance under the practical difficulty standard uh, were found in the affirmative by a vote of five in favor, zero opposed, except one. Um, and that one was the standard that requires that we find that there is no other feasible alternative to a variance uh, that is available to the petitioner. Um, before we go on with that, could yes. I ask Mr. Meyer a question, please? Mr. Meyer, if you'd come back up to the podium, please. Well, he's coming back. For the record, can we, can we state that the application was advertised properly, that it was 11.03 feet and not the 10.22 feet that we previously thought? Yes. Okay, fine. That, that is noted for the record that it was properly advertised at a, with a front Todd, lot, Todd Road property line variance of 11.03 feet from the required 25 feet. Mm -hmm. Mr. Keneally? Uh, Mrs. Friedman was quite adamant about wanting to retain the yep. bay window. Did, you offered an accommodation. I, well, I wasn't sure of whether she agreed with you on that. Did she agree with you on that accommodation? Yeah, her, her issue is more to have that bay window because it lets more light in. And if we have to slide back the wall with the bay to accommodate that, it's not going to infringe that much. Yeah, so she was, I, I didn't the light. see any agreement between the two of you on that. That's why I was. Pardon? But she was in agreement with you to pull back? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Either that pull that back the wall or make the bay less. Yeah, less than an intrusion on the outside. Okay, I wasn't. It was that area between the covered porch and the garage? We could slide that back, and and it would it would look better also, because it would have that jog in there, and it wouldn't the bay window wouldn't project out, like which is Mr. Chad. So the whole wall's going to come back then. To yeah. yeah. By how much a foot or so? That's probably about what it would take. Yes. According okay. to the depth of the bay. Oh, you know, that we may find that that bay isn't uh, reusable because of its condition. Go with it and one that doesn't protrude as much. So going back to the no other feasible alternative to a variance being available, I take it that the concern on that element was that there is, in fact, a feasible alternative, and that is to pull the wall back a bit so that the bay window does not protrude any closer than 11.03 feet um, to Todd Road. Correct? No. 11.03 is a variance to Todd Road. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it's the 13.97 feet is the correct number, that it doesn't protrude any closer than 13.97 feet. Is that correct, Bruce? Correct. Right. right. I was using the other side of the equation. Like, with that modification to the plans, are we satisfied that that feasible alternative issue is resolved? I am. I'm comfortable with the compromise made. I feel as though they, there was an alternative that they've addressed. I have a quick yes. question for Dr. Chavis, if I may. It's, um, I, I was comfortable with the plan initially to go forward this evening. However, I, I do understand your point, and I see the difference about uh, having an accurate set of plans 
at the time that the board acts. I know changes occur, and I guess I was comfortable to vote this evening, but I don't want to feel like you know, your principles are being, I mean, can you live with that concept this evening? Or I'm you, sorry. Can you live with that concept this evening, or do you think that that principle, principle is being compromised if we, if we try and uh, approve this this evening on a, uh, an agreement that the, this wall is going to be modified? No, I'm, I'm comfortable with the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Meyer, you're being asked on behalf of the, the property owners uh, to agree to pull back that bay wall yep. or the bay window, yep. but in any event, uh, not have the bay window protrude. Um, more than uh, or not to have any protrusion that is more than 13.97 feet uh, into the setback. Yep. And is that a commitment that you're willing to make yes. to the board and the, yep. and the, the plan? With the exception of the steps. With the exception of the steps on the porch. Hmm. And, and the roof line. The, the overhang. Uh, that's yes, yes. We can make it. And work. I'm viewing that as a sig significant facade facing of the wall, and that's that's. I'm viewing the bay window as a face of the wall. Technically, it right. is not, and I fully support Bruce along that line. Yes, I agree. With that agreement, um, let's revisit the element dealing with feasible alternative. So with, with the plan revised as agreed by Mr. Meyer, um, a show of hands from board members who find that there is no other feasible alternative to a variance available to the petitioner. And that is found in favor by a vote of five to zero. Now with those findings, can I have a motion from someone uh, substantially as follows. Whereas four or, more, four or more voting members of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals have found that the applicant, Martin Meyer, on behalf of the owners, Daniel and Sabina Friedman, have established that a practical difficulty exists with respect to the applicant's property at 2 Todd Road in accordance with the provisions of section 19-5-2B1 of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. And whereas four or more voting members of the board have found that the applicant has met the applicant's burden of proof in establishing that all conditions specified in section 19-5-2B1 have been met, um, I move that the application for a variance, well, the application for a front Todd Road line, property line variance of 11.03 feet from the required 25 feet, a front Shore Road property line variance of 6.7 feet from the required 40 feet, and a right side property line variance of 4.37 feet from the required 25 feet for the construction of the addition specified in the application be approved with the modification that the bay window 
included in the plans will either be removed or set back so that neither the window nor any portion of the wall of the proposed addition protrudes more than protrudes into a setback of 13.97 feet from Todd Road. With the exception of roof line. Well, not including the roof line of the steps, but the way I tried to word it, those weren't encompassed. Um, but not certainly not including the roof line um, or the steps to the front porch. Um, can I have a motion to that effect? I'll make that well <laughs> Mr. Motion. Tran Faglia, motion. A second. Second. Discussion on the motion. Hearing none, all those in favor? The motion is approved by a vote of five in favor, zero opposed, and the application is granted as amended by the terms of our vote. Thanks for your patience. Next item on the agenda is communications. Do we have any? Nope. Next item on the agenda is adjournment. May I have a motion? I need to move. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>